Hello and welcome back to Will It Work. Today we're going to take a look at turning the iPhone into a DOS PC and installing games onto it from its original retail media. Now the first thing I want to point out is that this iPhone is not jailbroken and we're not running any software on a server through a web browser. This is all Apple approved App Store software. The program in question is called iDOS 2 and it's a DOS emulator based on DOSBox and what's really cool about it is that it allows you to sideload application programs. I can't think of anything else in the App Store that allows you to do this. Apple's usually really strict about allowing emulators in there and executing any kind of code that they haven't approved. So I'm quite surprised that this actually works the way it does. Basically, you can mount any folder in the Files app as a drive letter, so like D or E, and then run software right from it. And it got me thinking, well, any external USB storage you attach to the iPhone also shows up in the Files app. Could we map the original software and install it? Which, of course, back then would have been either floppy disks or CD-ROMs. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that floppy disks and CD-ROMs don't work out of the gate with the iPhone. You have to do some serious workarounds in order to get that to function properly. So that's what we're going to look at today. And first thing is I wanted to top it off. I didn't want to use a modern keyboard and mouse. So I tracked down an old uh, PS2 keyboard and an old PS2 mouse. And over here I have this adapter that connects both the keyboard and the mouse together with the PS2 connections and then goes to USB. I remember these back in the day when people were transitioning over to USB. But I was kind of curious if this would even work on the iPhone. So let's see. I'm going to plug it into powered hub here. And the hub is connected into the lightning to USB adapter here into the phone. So let's see. Yeah, we're typing. Keyboard works. And mouse works. Very cool. That little mini hub converter works. Okay, so let's get started. And let's start with floppy disks and see if we can get software installed onto the iPhone from the original floppy disk. Okay, so the first game we're going to look at is this DOS pinball game. I got this on eBay for $8, still shrink wrap from 1993. Let's see if this works. Now, as I've mentioned on my channel before, you cannot use USB floppy drives with the iPhone. They have their own subclass of USB mass storage and the iPhone just doesn't support it. The only way to get a floppy disk to work on the iPhone is to use the Emation Super Disk Drive. This used 120 megabyte super floppies. It was a competitor to the zip drive, but unlike the zip drive, it was backward compatible with their older 1.4 and 720K floppy disks. So let's see if this will work. Okay, so to open up the file browser on iDOS, we're going to type in open-d, and let's see if we can find it. There it is, no name. Okay, so now it's the D drive, hopefully, so we'll move over to that, to a directory. All right, and how you install this is just type go. There's a little exe named go, and that kicks off the installer. We'll say yes to install, to see. Just gonna take the defaults here. Now it's extracting everything. Now we're not going to read the directions. We're going to install the sound card, 
Sound Blaster 16. All right, let's fire it up. Sound and everything. Use the shift buttons for the flippers and the space bar to plunge the ball. All right, pretty cool. Works great, installed fine. We have sound, everything works beautifully from the original 1993 retail media. Pretty cool. Okay, let's move on and try a CD-ROM. Okay, for the CD-ROM, I'm gonna go with a game called Clash of Steel, which is an early 90s World War II strategy game. And it's on this compilation CD I bought in the late 90s, and I still have it, so let's give that a whirl. Now, as I pointed out on my channel before, CD-ROM drives also don't work with the iPhone, just like USB floppy drives don't, for a variety of reasons. And the most important one is, is that the iPhone doesn't read the ISO 9660 or the UDF file system that CD-ROM and DVD-ROM disks use. So, I came across this light on USB CD-ROM player a few months ago and I did a video on it and it's really cool. It's designed for smart TVs which also don't work with USB CD-ROMs and basically it translates the disk to FAT32 on the fly so the USB host just thinks it's a thumb drive. So it's pretty cool and it works great. It does have some lag because it has to translate the disk at each directory level but fortunately there's not a ton of data on the CD-ROM so it's not too bad. So let's give it a whirl. I've already put it in flash disk mode, as I like to call it. It's got the little green light here on the door. So we'll put this in. And we're gonna give it a few seconds here while it translates and loads into the iPhone. Okay. Just a few more seconds. Okay. So let's try open dash D again. And there it is. It'll take a few seconds to come up here. or translation. And once that cursor starts blinking, we're good to go.
Okay. Let's go to D. Type in install. Okay, here's all the games. We're going to go down to Clash of Steel. Grab the mouse here. Start the install. All right. Let's install sound drivers. Okay, let's give it a whirl. All right. Okay, so I'll just be Germany because they go first. Now you'll see the game's cursor error, and that's what actually works, but you'll also see the round dot of the iOS mouse pointer. Um, used to be able to turn that off when it was in accessibility, but now it just comes on whenever you have a mouse attached. So just ignore that round one. The only one that matters is the arrow. I should be able to go here and move my troops forward. And there you go. Works perfect. Mouse, keyboard, everything. This app alone, I think, is amazing just because I can't think of anything else like it. I think about the thousands of games you could just sideload, and it's all Apple approved. You don't have to jailbreak anything. And if you had the original media and the right equipment, you could even install it that way. All in all, this has turned out really, really great. This has just been really cool to figure out and to show you guys, and it just worked great. I mean, there really was no caveats to it. it the, the developer of this program has done an excellent job. So anyway, that's all for now. If you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. I will be back soon, but that's all for now. Take care.